Welcome to WWP React's Biology Overview Series. This is a full semester biology class online just for you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am a retired high school and post-secondary educator of biology and chemistry in New Hampshire and Kansas. I taught post-secondary education as an adjunct professor in the 1990s at places such as New England College and New Hampshire Technical College Nursing Program. I also was a paid tutor to the University of Kansas Biology Department early on in my career. While there, I had the honor to teach in the University of Kansas Gifted Youngster Summer Program at their Museum of Natural History. I do private tutoring now in my free time and I'm doing online tutoring as well if you are interested. Or please just ask me any questions in the comments and I will be happy to answer. Welcome to this presentation on cell types and cell structure. Today we will explore the two major categories of cells prokaryotic and eukaryotic. These two groups differ in structure, complexity, and function. Understanding these differences is foundational to biology because every living organism is made of one of these cell types. Let's begin with prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotes have no nucleus, meaning their DNA is not enclosed. They also lack membrane-bound organelles such as mitochondria or the Golgi apparatus. Their DNA is typically a single chromosome, and their cytoplasm shows no streaming movement. Cell division occurs without mitosis, and they usually have simple flagella for movement. Their ribosomes are smaller, their cytoskeleton is simple, and they do not contain cellulose in their cell walls or histone proteins bound to DNA. Now compare that to eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotes have a true nucleus, membrane-enclosed organelles, and their DNA is organized in paired chromosomes. The cytoplasm shows active streaming, and they divide by mitosis. Their flagella, when present, are more complex and their ribosomes are larger. Eukaryotes have a complex cytoskeleton, cellulose-containing cell walls in plants, and their DNA is tightly bound to histone proteins. When we talk about prokaryotic cells, the primary example is bacteria. All bacteria are prokaryotic organisms. Eukaryotic cells, on the other hand, are found in a wide variety of organisms, including plants, animals, fungi, and protists. These groups include everything from trees to humans to mushrooms to microscopic protists. Next, let's look at the plasma membrane, which surrounds all cells. In plant cells, the membrane is additionally protected by a cell wall made of cellulose and proteins. The plasma membrane controls what enters and exits the cell, helping maintain a stable internal environment. The cytoplasm is the fluid interior of the cell, made of cytosol and all internal organelles. It supports cell function by allowing chemical reactions to occur and by holding organelles in place. The nucleus is the command center of eukaryotic cells. It is surrounded by a nuclear envelope and contains the cell's chromosomes, which are made of DNA wrapped around histone proteins. The nucleus controls gene expression and cell activity. The endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, comes in two forms. The rough ER transports proteins and appears rough due to ribosomes attached to its surface. The smooth ER is responsible for processing and transporting lipids. Together, these structures help build and move essential molecules throughout the cell. Ribosomes are the sites of protein synthesis. Many ribosomes attach to the rough ER, while others float freely in the cytoplasm. No matter where they're located, their function is the same, assembling proteins from amino acids. The Golgi apparatus, sometimes called the Golgi body or Golgi complex, is responsible for the assembly, modification, and packaging of proteins. Think of it as the post office of the cell, sorting and preparing molecules for transport to their destinations. Lysosomes are organelles mostly found in animal cells. They contain enzymes that break down large molecules, old organelles, and cellular debris. Lysosomes help keep the cell clean and recycle important components. The mitochondria are the cell's powerhouse. This is where ATP, the main energy molecule of the cell, is synthesized. Cells that require a lot of energy, like muscle cells, contain many mitochondria. Flagella and cilia are cell surface projections that help cells move or help move substances across cell surfaces. Flagella are long and tail-like, while cilia are shorter and more numerous. These structures make up the cytoskeleton, the internal framework of eukaryotic cells. 
Microtubules and microfilaments provide shape, support, and pathways for movement inside the cell. Vacuoles are storage organelles. Plant cells have a large central vacuole that stores water, pigments, and enzymes. This vacuole helps maintain the plant's structure and supports growth. Chloroplasts are specialized organelles found only in plant cells. They contain chlorophyll, the green pigment that captures light energy for photosynthesis. Chloroplasts allow plants to produce their own food. Finally, let's compare plant and animal cells. Plant cells contain a large central vacuole, chloroplasts, and a rigid cell wall surrounding the membrane. Animal cells do not have a large central vacuole, do not contain chloroplasts, and do not have a rigid cell wall. These structural differences reflect the different roles plants and animals play in nature. If you enjoy this type of learning content for yourself or your, the students in the family, please like and share for the next lesson in the series where we will look at an actual microscopic view of these different cell types, from simple onion cells to bacterial cells to red and white blood cells.